So today we're going to be tackling this sort of matrix theme tunnel. Uh, it's kind of got like binary codes all around it. It's an infinite loop and it's actually really easy to make. It's only going to take about five minutes of your time. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Now the first thing you want to do is download Blender. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically an open source 3D application and it's really awesome. Like you can do so much of it. Uh, this is what we're going to be using to make the 3D animation. So yeah, head to blender.org, download the latest version of Blender, install that and thank me later. And while you're at it, why not check out my Instagram page where I post all of my work that I make in Blender. My handle is at Nemmotion and you can find that just down below. Right, so once you've downloaded and installed Blender, first thing you want to do is just open it up and just come out of this. And you just want to delete this default cube, so hit X and delete. Now hit Shift A and we're going to add a mesh and we're going to add a cylinder. And this is going to be our tunnel. Now the first thing you want to do is just rotate it so it goes along the Y axis. So hit R, X, 90. Now I just want to delete these faces so we can actually go through the tunnel. So what you want to do is hit tab and it's going to take you into edit mode. Just click anywhere out of the object and you want to come over here to face select. Click on that, select this face, hit X and delete faces and do the same on the other end. So hit X and delete faces. Now come back out of edit mode, so hit tab and now you'll see we've got a kind of tube here. But we want to make the tunnel a little bit longer, so we're going to hit S, then Y, and then 8, so it scales the object on the Y axis 8 meters long. Now we just want to place our camera along the end of the tunnel. So select your camera, just hit Alt G to reset the location, and then Alt R to reset the rotation. And now same again, we want the camera to face along the y-axis. So we're just going to hit RX90 and that's going to face it along the tunnel. We want to move the camera to the start of the tunnel. So we're going to select our camera again and just hit G, Y, minus 8. And now you see the camera is at the start of the tunnel. Now the first thing we want to do is just animate this camera. So it goes along the tunnel to the end and then back again to create that looping effect. So to do that, select your camera, bring up the timeline, and we're going to change the end frame to 120 because we want it to be a five second loop. And now with our camera selected, we're going to go to the location settings, which is just here, and we're going to add a keyframe on the y-axis at minus eight, ensuring you're at frame one. Just add a keyframe, come to the end, push that to 121, and then we're going to change the location axis on the y to eight, and now we're going to add a keyframe. And the reason why we put it to 1 to 1 is because if you put it to 120, you're going to get a duplicate frame rendered so it won't loop properly. Uh, just make sure that you set it to 1 to 1. Now when you hit play, you're going to see the camera goes through the tunnel and then it comes to the end and then back again. But you notice it sort of smooths out towards the end so we want to make it a linear animation. So you want to come over to your timeline, hit A. To select all the keyframes, hit T and then change that to linear. And now when you hit play, it's going to be a constant animation. Now if you hit zero, that will take you into camera mode and you can see that animation. Now you notice it doesn't loop seamlessly yet and that's because we haven't extended the tunnel. So we're just going to make duplicates of this along the y-axis to give the illusion that the tunnel is infinite. We're going to make this an instance so that any changes that we make to the tunnel will affect all the other duplicates. So to do that, just click on your tunnel, hit M, add to new collection, and we'll call this tunnel. Now hit Shift A, add a collection instance, and we're just going to add that instance that we just made. And now I want you to hit G, Y, 16, and that's going to make sure that the end of the first tunnel starts exactly where the start of the next tunnel is, and that's going to create that looping effect. Now I want you to duplicate that instance, so hit Shift D on your tunnel, and then hit Y16 and I just want you to now hit Shift R and just keep hitting Shift R which repeats the process for you and you're just going to do that about 10 times so you have a nice long tunnel. Now if you hit zero and go into camera mode now you can see the tunnel will loop seamlessly. Cool. Next step, I just want to shade this tunnel smooth. You can kind of see jagged edges on it and I want to make it a sort of smooth tunnel. So if you just click on your tunnel, go to object, select shade smooth, and that's going to 
get rid of all those edges. And that's the cool thing about instancing, because any edit that you make to the original object is going to affect the whole collection. Right, so now we're going to actually start shading this tunnel to give it that sort of binary digital effect. And to do that, we're going to use an image texture. You're going to have to create one out of Blender for this. So if we just come out of Blender for now, I have an image here that I've made. Now I just made that by just typing in these ones and zeros into a program and then just saving it as an image. Now you can just use a program like Photoshop to make this or if you want, you could go into like a Word document or a text edit program and just do it yourself like one zero one zero one zero one zero. And you can just repeat this and then simply just take a screenshot of it if you want. And then you can just change the font to something a bit more sort of digital looking. And then all you've got to do is just like take a screenshot of it and then you can import it in. But we're just going to use this one that I've made already. And if you can't be asked to make your own, I'll be leaving a link to this in the description. So once you've made your image, we just need to go into rendered mode to start shading this. So you want to go back into Blender, hit Z and then 8. And that's going to take you into rendered mode where you can start adding like lighting effects and shading and stuff like that. So first thing I'm going to do is just delete this light because we don't need that. So just click on that light, hit X and delete. Come to the world settings here, color, bring that down to black. And I'm going to go into camera view as well. So just hit zero and you're not going to be able to see anything. And that's because we've deleted the light in the scene. So we're actually going to be lighting the scene using emission shading. So to do that, click on your original tunnel, should be called cylinder. If you scroll to the bottom, you should find it and come to your material properties here. We're going to add a new material and we're going to change the surface to an emission and it's just going to be bright now. And the reason for this is because the emission material essentially emits light. And as you can see, the color of the light is just white. And we're going to pump that up to 20 on the strength. Now we're a bit limited to what we can do in this menu here. So what I want you to do is just come up to the top corner here, see where your mouse turns into a little cross, just click there and just drag it in and you're going to open up a new window here. And if you come to this little box here, just click on that and change that to shader editor and just drag this in. Now what you'll see here is exactly what you see here. It's just a different way of doing things. This lets you go in a bit more depth. So first thing I want you to do is hit shift A in this node based editor and I want you to add a converter and we're going to add a color ramp and just pop that in and just plug the color into the emission shader. And now we're going to assign our image into this color ramp and it's going to bring all those digits into the tunnel. So you can do it manually by adding nodes, but I want to show you a little add-on that Blender has, which is really helpful, just saves you a bit of time. So if you go into Edit, go to Preferences, come over here to Add-ons, and I want you to search for Node Wrangler, and just make sure that thing's checked, and that will install this plugin. It's a really handy plugin, as it gives you some shortcuts within this Node Editor, that just saves you a lot of time. So with that Node Wrangler installed, click on your color ramp, and just hit Control T, and that's going to add this image texture along with a mapping node and a texture coordinate. So just move that here, click on open on this image texture. And I just want you to find where you saved your um, binary image. Just find that and just add it in. Now, because my one was a black background with white text, it's going to look fine. If you did it from say the text edit and it's going to be black text with a white background, just flip these rounds on the color ramp and that will flip that around for you. But regardless, I just want you to crunch the black parameter in with the white parameter and that's just gonna give it a bit more fidelity with the digits. So just make sure they're quite close together. I'm just gonna take my overlays off as well. You see that little orange bit, I'm just gonna turn that off. Just give me an accurate representation of the render. And you can change the scaling of the, um, of the digits as well. If you just come to your mapping coordinate, just make sure the UV is plugged into the vector. If it's not, you just simply click on it and just drag it in and plug it in. And I want you to look at the scaling parameters on your mapping node and this is where you can sort of uh, change the amount of digits you get in there. So if you really pump up that Y, you get more on the Y axis and vice versa with the X. We'll say about four on the X and we'll pump the Y up. We'll say about four on the Y as well. Give us lots of digits. And now when you hit play, that's gonna look really cool. Right, that's pretty much it, man. It's really easy as I told you. So uh, there are some more things you can do as well. If you uh, come up to your camera, go into your camera settings here, you can change the focal length if you want. If you want to push it in, it's going to give the illusion that it's moving a bit slower. And if you bring the focal length out, it will sort of give the illusion that the tunnel is moving faster. But yeah, just have a play around with the focal length, 
play around with the mapping scales until you find something you like. You can also keyframe some rotation on your camera. If you rotate it on the Y, you can get some cool effects as you're going through the tunnel, for example, like that. But I'll leave that to you guys to be creative. The only thing left to do now is just to render the animation. So if you come over here to your scene settings, if you just uh, go to your output, make sure you save that somewhere you can find it. You don't want it to put it in the TMP folder, just save it somewhere you can find it. That's where the render is going to come out. File format, change that to FFmpeg video. Encoding, I want you to change that to MP4. Video codec, leave that as H.264. Output quality, perceptually lossless. And then all you got to do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And also feel free to tag me in your renders on Instagram. That's at then motion. I'd really love to see what you guys come up with from the tutorials I'm putting out. And I'll also be leaving a link to the project file and that image texture in the description. And you can find more of my work at nevmotion.co.uk.